Alright, so unfortunately there's no bald eagles in the nest today and there's been no bald eagles on the bear branch or the nest um, for about four days now. And um, about three days ago, um, there was a couple here and they actually heard eagle sounds out in the distance. And I, I, uh, I thought it, they were coming from that way over on you know over at the you know down the trail right there but I didn't see any so I came back here and the sound was getting louder the bald eagle calls so I, uh, I, I, I had a feeling that they would be over like past the nest area like all the way over there like past the lake so what I'm gonna be doing today is I'm gonna do an unboxing video okay so I bought a hardcover for my cell phone case because I have like a lot of like dents and scratches on it. So I can show you the phone way quick. Hang on, it's not this one, it's, oh crap, I just gotta pull it out. It's, it's right here. Yeah, so as you can see, um, you can see it's got a big, big fat old dent right there. Basically, uh, as I was walking out of the car, I end up dropping it by accident. Yeah, I was holding my keys, I was holding my wallet, and I was holding my phone all in one hand. Which was stupid of me to do. I should have just put it in my pocket. But no, I carried all those things at once, and then this fell, and then boom. So, I bought this on redbubble.com. It's got a very special item inside. It's got something related to raptors, of course. That's why I'm uploading this video here. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what's inside. And then I'm going to tell you why I purchased this item. And you're going to be pretty surprised. It's the reason why I bought it. All right, so very easy to open. Yeah, there we go. All right. So now we're going to take it out. Okay, so, and let me just cover my address here. So that's it right there, okay? Yep, that's the phone, or the cover. You can't see it very well, but you're going to see it well once we open this up. So this is my phone case, all right. Now, the moment of truth. Ooh, take a look at that. Oh, let's zoom in on that squirrel that this hawk captured. Yeah. Would you like to know why I picked this cover right here? Let me make sure there's nobody else around so I can explain it. Okay, nobody. Okay, great. Well, I love falconry. And this, this, this actually is a wild hawk, by the way. It's not a falconry bird. But one of these days, I want to become a falconer. And even though I do have some doubts about the sport, the one thing I love about the sport is watching a hawk eat its prey. It's just the most coolest thing that I can ever see. And one of these days, my hawk is going to catch a squirrel just like this one and I'm going to bend down on the ground and enjoy that squirrel with the red-tailed hawk. That delicious yummy squirrel, yes that's right. I'm going to eat that squirrel right on the ground right where the hawk caught it. So why do I want to do that? Well I just I just want to eat just like a red-tailed hawk. I mean, that's just who I think I want to become. I want to be a hawk just like this one, just like this hawk right here. And I just think it would be really, really cool if I could just taste a squirrel for myself. A freshly killed squirrel, obviously. I mean, and I, the only thing I like is hawks and eagles eating freshly caught prey. What I don't like seeing is vultures eating prey because it's all like rotten and decomposing and whatever. But when a hawk catches a freshly killed meal, 
you know it's fresh. And a lot of times they're still alive while they're actually tearing into the prey, which I always think is pretty cool. So um, about falconry and the things I don't really like about it is the only things I don't really like about it is three things, the hooding, the, uh, the trade-off that they do, and tethering, where they tether the, uh, the hawk on the ground to prevent it from escaping if it eats too much of its meal. Because what happens is when they get full, they no longer have any need to rely on the falconer and they become more independent. So they just do what hawks do and they just fly off without any concern about the falconer at all. So yeah, hawks only see falconers as a source of food and that's it. They're not friends, they're not comrades of any sort, you know, they're I mean, sure, they're hunting partners. I guess you could consider that a comrade since the falconer flushes out prey for them. But that's really the only relationship that they have with them. So what if I could share a meal with a red-tailed hawk and it accepts that? I know that sounds crazy because like only its mate would, would do that sort of thing. But what if I could? And also I'm, I'm, even though, I mean, I may not be able to eat this, like, right away, I mean, I could try some raw steak and share it with my red-tailed hawk first. So, just some ideas that I have. Um, oh yeah, about the, the hooding, the hooding is, like, I just don't really like putting something over the hawk's eyes. But that's not really the only reason, I just want to challenge myself. I want to make sure that I'm the best falconer that that's ever existed. I know that's like really boosting about myself, but and these flies are bothering me. Um, but yeah, I just want to challenge myself. I just want to be the best falconer that I could possibly be, and that's it. And also the what's the other thing that I said about it? The trade-off. Oh yeah. Why do a trade-off if I can eat some of the squirrel with the red-tailed hawk? I can probably eat more of that squirrel than the hawk could. Yeah, that would defeat the purpose of the trade-off. Yeah, no need for a trade-off anymore. The hawk is still hungry. It'll still hunt again. Oh yeah, but then I'll get full. You're right. <laughs> and then what then? Well, uh, well, maybe it could just catch two meals or maybe just a slightly smaller squirrel next time. <laughs> I don't know, but I would rather do the tethering than do the other thing. Somebody's coming close, so I have to pause the video for a second. Okay, and we're back, okay. So, just to explain, I just wanna make sure that the hawk gets the best lifestyle that can possibly get, similar to what it gets in the wild. Okay, I don't expect anything more. So the biggest problem is that these hawks live in an enclosure when they're not hunting. So they're not as active when they're not hunting. When they're in the wild, they're everywhere. You know what I mean? Even when they're not hunting, they still fly from tree branch to tree branch, just observing the area. There's really nothing they do. They just maybe just gather some sun rays or Try, try to avoid mockingbirds or red-winged blackbirds or crows from dive bombing them. You know, that happens a lot during the breeding, uh, the nesting season. And, okay, and then the last part, I kind of mentioned the tethering. I would, I would rather just have a hawk not feel imprisoned in any way. I think of tethers like chains. You're chaining a hawk up. And I don't want to chain a hawk in any way. I would rather just have it get used to being near me you know I mean if it gets used to being near me then it will over time you know it'll 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 adjust but you could still have it adjust using the tether for a little while and then get used to the falconer what I'd want to do is I'd want a hawk that would want to come back to me after it gets released in the wild 
And how do you do that? By building the most amount of trust in the hawk that you possibly can. The more trust that you build in the hawk, the more likely it is that it'll come back to see you again at some point in time in the future. Now, like I said, I'm going to be a beginner. You know, I mean, I've never done falconry before, obviously. So, what are the odds of me being the absolute best falconer? I mean, pretty darn slim. And I'm sure probably the best falconer that's ever existed probably existed thousands of years ago. So that person's probably not me. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much all I have to say. I just love, love, love that screen. Okay, so, yeah, so, this is definitely not going on Facebook, that's for sure, um, because I don't want any family members to know about this video. And I can hear a bald eagle calling. Maybe the parents are on the tree branch, maybe they're not. If if they are, I'll make sure that I post a video about it. And I'll just do it separately from this one. Yeah, see that? See that squirrel right there? Yeah, I love that squirrel, yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's about all I got. And stay tuned, there's more eagle videos to come. And, oh, by the way, I've got some more collectibles that I'm going to be collecting. That's also from redbubble.com. Oh, by the way, I'll have a link in the description. So if you want to purchase this same item that I have, you very well can. Yeah. So check the description on the bottom of the video right here. And then this could be yours. Yes, it's like $30 plus shipping. All right. All right. I'll be seeing you.